Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Limited, a paper small UAV that offers FPV flying. A lawsuit is in the works because of FAA changing traffic flow. Ladies Love Tail Draggers announces their scholarships for 2017. I'm Brie Cross, it's January 6, 2017, and this is Airborne Limited. Power Up recently launched their Power Up FPV, the first paper airplane drone with a live streaming camera. FPV stands for first person view, which means the operator can view the flight on a portable device as if he or she were inside the cockpit of an aircraft. Power Up CEO and founder Shay Goldhine said, quote, Wearing your smartphone with a head-mounted display, you see what your plane sees, controlling your paper drone with the intuitive movements of your head. Some of the features include a flying time of about 10 minutes per charge, with a speed of up to 20 miles per hour. Of course, it has an autopilot and a wide-angle rotating camera, providing front side and rear camera views. Because of its light weight of only 2.8 ounces, it does not have to be FAA registered. It's compatible with both iOS and Android systems. PowerUp FPV has been named a Best of Innovation Awards honoree for drones and unmanned systems at the Consumer Technology Association trade show. a and Jim Campbell is attending this trade show in Vegas, and we hope to bring you some really cool reports in the future broadcasts. Officials in Howard County, Maryland have prepared legislation that would authorize the county to take legal action against the FAA in response to air traffic changes under NextGen at Baltimore Washington International Airport. As has happened in nearly every city where the new flight patterns have been put in place, residents in the new approach and departure corridors say they have frequent low-flying aircraft over their homes where they did not before. If Howard County is successful in filing a complaint against the FAA, it would be the first county government to do so, according to the report. Other suits have been filed by cities such as Phoenix, Arizona and Newport Beach, California. In some areas, homeowners associations have filed lawsuits as well. The city council says they are pursuing the legal action because they have not been able to get any resolution from the FAA in any other way. After the break, move over guys. These scholarships are for lady pilots only. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. The dream is real, a truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics Personal Jet Kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit Plus engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Limited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The Ladies Love Tail Draggers organization says it's time to apply for their 2017 Ladies Love Tail Draggers scholarships. This year, they are reported to have five scholarships available. Scholarship number one is being provided by Brian Landsberg at Tailwheel Town, located on Sisters Airport in Oregon. This one will get you a Tailwheel endorsement valued at $1,995. Scholarship number two provides $1,000 to be used with any flight school instructor for the purpose of obtaining a Tailwheel endorsement. Scholarship number three is a stick and rudder master class and is valued at $1,995. Scholarship number four is a short takeoff and landing class. The instruction and aircraft is provided by Charles Lewis at South Oaks Aerodrome in Winterville, North Carolina. This one is valued at $2,400. And lastly, scholarship number five provides both a tailwheel endorsement and unusual attitude training. This training is being provided by Billy Worth of Billy Worth Air Shows and Grayout Aerosports, located in Indianapolis, Indiana. This training is valued at $1,500. Online applications are due by midnight February 28th, and the winners will be announced no later than April 15th. It's Friday, and that means that it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. In this barnstorming, Jim looks to the future of 2017, 
He sees some good things on the horizon and will share some promising ideas for a full and productive new year at a and Here is this week's Barnstorming. Thanks, Brian. Hi, folks. Well, it's a new year. Uh, by the time you see this, both Nathan and I are on our way to the Consumer Electronics Show, or actually should be there by now, and from there to the Academy of Model Aeronautics uh, Expo West in Ontario, California. And from there, I'm going to do a day or so at Santa Monica and do a little bit of advanced work to take a look at all the things that we're going to need to cover when we go out there for a week sometime this spring in order to bring you Airborne Live from Santa Monica for the week, as well as a number of other projects, including a number of short and one very long comprehensive documentary that will take a look at what's happened, where it's at, and where it all might go. But let's talk about the future, and let's talk about the future with hope, because that's what I'm feeling right now. One of the things I get to do as part of Aero News is take a look at things in process, talk to some of the movers and the shakers and the innovators. And in the process of working with a number of military people within the flight simulation community and a number of areas similarly associated with high technology, I've seen some pretty cool stuff. So let me ask you this. Based on what I've seen, this could happen in fairly short order and in some ways is happening right now. Let me ask you this. If we took today's not-so-inexpensive reality of the $10,000 private pilot license, a ticket that's often had to be dragged out over the course of months due to the costs and scheduling issues involved in today's flight training environment, and made that process faster, far more modern, far more cohesive, far more interesting and entertaining, and allowed the cost to drop to as little as three to $5,000 for the whole shebang, and that's estimated over the course of what has been an average of about 60 hours, just what effect do you think that would have? Now, mind you, I'm not talking about pie in the sky here. This is something I think we can do within the year, this year. Um, I'm looking at a number of technologies. This involves VR. It involves some extensive uh, new graphic solutions. It involves some really exciting ways to build courses, build cohesive educational experiences to allow people to take a lot of this stuff home. There's no reason in the world when you're learning to use a, a GPS and so forth that that can't be done through an AI and can't be done at home on the person's Mac or PC. There's so many other things that could conceivably come together to make the educational experience not only better, not only cheaper, but far more modern. And that's the thing we need to deal with. This is not 1979 anymore. You're probably sick of me saying this, but we have to not only look at aviation as a future endeavor, we have to be that future. Innovate, create aggressively, and think about coloring way outside the lines, working way outside the normal confines of quote unquote reality, and build a new reality and a new industry that not only can survive, but can absolutely prosper. What a concept. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm out having some fun looking at the future. And we'll be sharing a lot more of that with you in the, in the future as well. After these messages, the Army believes that their CH-47 Chinook helicopter can last longer than the pilots who fly them. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. And now Laura's going to take us around the patch. Thanks, Bree. The U.S. Army believes it can fly the CH-47 Chinook helicopter through 2060, which will give the aircraft an operational life of 100 years. ScoutWarrior.com reports that the life of the aircraft will be extended through a continuous series of upgrades. Kang & Kang LLP has announced its intention to file a class action lawsuit against GoPro. The complaint alleges that GoPro made false and misleading statements to investors and or failed to disclose faults with their Karma drone. 
in response to the recently released FAR 107 regulations for pre-flight inspections and record keeping for non-recreational drone use, AeroWorks has released a professionally designed commercial SUAS logbook. This commercial SUAS logbook was created by professional drone operators to meet the regulatory requirements. Masters Instructors LLC said in a news release that two flight instructors were accredited as Masters by Masters Instructors LLC, which is the International Master Instructor Accrediting Authority. They are Andrew Marinelli of Youngstown, Ohio and Shan Van Vert of Pella, Iowa. The Upwind Foundation has released the 2017 scholarship applications and program dates. Upwind provides a scholarship that includes private pilot flight and ground training for high school students. The deadline for application is February 17, 2017. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Back to you, Bree. Thanks, Laura. The Albit Systems Clear Vision Enhanced Flight Vision System, the acronym for this is EFVS, allows a pilot to perform a full landing with no natural vision under a new rule which becomes effective March 13, 2017. The system allows dispatch and landing at a completely socked in airport, regardless of the destination airport's infrastructure. Prior to updating the ruling, EFES was only approved for use for descent to 100 feet above the touchdown zone elevation using straight in landing instrument approach procedures. The new ruling allows operators to use an EFES to continue descending from 100 feet above the runway elevation to the runway and complete landing on certain straighten instrument approaches. The ruling also updated the regulations to initiate and continue an approach when the destination airport's weather is below authorized visibility minimums for the runway of intended landing. This new ruling includes a requirement for pilot training and recent flight experience for operators who use EFES. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Limited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe. And don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend. We will see you Monday.